Hey everyone, what's up? Um, I wanted to make this tutorial because this picture in front of you is something that people have been asking about, especially since I posted it. Now, I'm not the first person to do this. Um, I've seen this happen a lot. It's quite easy to do, but people were questioning me about how I went about making this. So I wanted to show you guys. So first of all, what this is, is a, a visual representation of all the strokes that I did in my retouching process. So it, it gives you an idea of color-coded um, um, strokes. So for example, the purple is my healing and cloning work. Um, my dodging is going to be my blue and my burning is my orange. And you can make this any color you want. You can add more layers. You can make it as you know crazy as you wanted to. So do whatever it is that you want with this tutorial. So first of all, I have all my layers on top here. And this image was provided to me uh, by Jeff Rojas, who we worked on together, something very special he had coming up for WPPI. So thanks for that, Jeff. And also because digital transitions and phase one uh, were a part of this as well. This was actually from the phase one 100 megapixel back. So you can get an idea of how big this is. This is 12% of the image. And as we zoom in, you will notice that it has quite a bit of resolution. So this is 100%. This is going out to you know 15 or 12, which is quite ex quite extensive. Um, so you know with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this tutorial. So I'll go ahead and, and delete this folder since we don't need it anymore. The first thing that we want to do is get an idea of how to select our brush strokes. Essentially, is what we're going to do. Now, keep in mind that if you don't work in a non-destructive workflow where you have all your uh, work on empty layers or you have your dodge and burn on masks or anything like that or your color correction on a blank layer, then this is not going to work for you. Now, if you want to you know, learn more about it, I'll post some guides in the, in the description below on how you can learn about this workflow. But in the meantime, let's go and uh, step forward by making our first... Um, first color in our canvas uh, of, of what we're going to do. So I'll go down here and go to my healing, healing and cloning and I'll hold control or command if you're on a PC or a Mac, control on a PC and I will click the thumbnail of the layer itself and what that does is it brings up the marching ants um, across the face. So once I have that there, I'll select a new folder and this is where we're going to put everything that we do with our uh, blueprint. I call it the blueprint or the DNA of retouching because it really is that it shows you all the strokes that you've done. I'm not going to show you before and after because that's not out of that's out of my realm. But uh, I'm going to at least show you how I make this happen. So first, I'll select any color that I want with a solid color adjustment layer, and you can you can do anything like we did. I did purple initially, fuchsia, whatever you want to call it. If you want to get technical. Um, so purple, fuchsia, whatever. Now, as you notice, there's a distinction here is he has these purple dots around him, except there's no black. How do we get that? It's simple. Go back to your solid color adjustment layer, click on black, and then just bring it down right under there, the same group. And now here we go, we have black as our background and the color that we can change at any time in our first layer. So that's great. Now you can name these if you want to keep things under control, but that's up to you. Next thing, I'll hold Control or Command again. Now click on my Dodge Mask. Come up here. Click on Solid Color. And then put it to any color that I want. So you can see this, you know, teal, light blue color seems to be representative of what I've done. And the reason I know this is because if I hide these for a second and then go into my Dodge Mask, I can hold Option or Alt and then click on the Dodge Mask thumbnail. And what that does is it shows you all my brush strokes for the dodging. <clears throat> so if I get out of that by just clicking somewhere else and then bringing these back up, you'll notice that this teal is a representation of my Dodge uh, brush strokes. Okay, and the same thing goes for my burn. Control, click on the thumbnail. Doesn't even matter if the layer is selected, as long as you you know control or command and click on the thumbnail, it'll register the strokes for that mask. Then I'll go and add another solid color. 
and this time I'll do something else. Mm, how about yellow? If I'm burning, let's feel the burn. <laughs> All right, there we go. A little bit of red. Now I did some more healing work on top, so I'll go and control and click on that, and on another one. Solid color. <clears throat> let's maybe do another purplish. Thing to keep in line with this whole color scheme ish there we go or if you want to be you know consistent you can just drag over your mouse cursor and click on the same pink that's up to you I'll let you decide on that um, the one other thing to note is yes order does matter because the colors on top are the ones that are going to be showing you sh showing over the other ones so if I have you know uh, a, like a blue that gets hidden by the pink because the pink is on top of everything as you can see it, it it does matter so keep that in mind i think having the dodge and burn over the healing and cloning work is more important um the other thing you could do is play with different like blend modes if you want to get fancy with screen and stuff like that or overlay not overlay uh screen there we go uh, the interaction seems to be better as you can see, it gets more interesting. So play around, um, see how they work. And that's what I basically just cycle through them and see what's the most interesting one. For me, it usually is screen for something like this where your colors are interacting. Exclusion is also very fascinating because it, uh, it <laughs> changes the color spectrum based on where the colors are interacting from and the colors that are getting excluded. The one other thing that I need to note um, is how to add a lot more punch. So for example, say that you know the, the teal or cyan isn't strong enough, you can amplify that. Just go to image, adjustment, um, and levels, and then bring up the white point further and it crunches all the data. So the reason it does that is because it makes the white parts of the mask even whiter. So you know, it's it's something that you can do easily and the same thing goes for this one image adjustment levels and play around with that and that'll amplify that quite a bit now that's about it and the other thing you can do to make this even crazier is if you spend a lot more time in your images dodging and burning or healing and cloning or also just adding a lot of contouring as you notice I didn't add a lot of contouring on this one because you know the lighting was really good Jeff did a great job um, but aside from that, um, you, you'll be good to go. Um, contouring does add a lot more flavor to this because you get a lot more, um, you get it more filled out basically on the cheeks and the nose and the eyes and stuff like that. It looks more dynamic. And the other thing you can do is change the color of the background so you can make it dynamic by, you know, maybe adding custom paintbrushes and different types of colors everywhere and make it more fascinating. But, you know, it gives you an idea of things to play with, something gets you more excited about just retouching and maybe something that, you know, uh, gives you that really cool artistic element at the end. Again, nothing to take seriously. Don't get so hell-bent on, you know, this isn't the most accurate way to represent how retouching is. It's something just for fun, and I felt people would enjoy. Um, if you come up with something, I'd love to see post it in the comment section on YouTube. I'd love to check it out or send it to me via email, Facebook, whatever it is. And I'm excited to see what you guys come up with.